We're winding down the term here in week 5 with evaluation and assessment. At times, the two terms are conflated. However, my personal philosophy is that evaluation refers to evaluating the learning strategies, activities, and resources used in a class or training event. Assessment refers to evaluating the knowledge and skills acquired by the learners. The materials this week start out with a humorous look at course evaluations and then splits into resources for each of our class groups. You'll likely see some overlap here, as there are fewer differences between contexts at this stage of the instructional design process. Why do we evaluate? Well, we need to update resources. Sometimes, an article or reading from 40 years ago is appropriate. And sometimes, it's no longer effective. It depends on how and why you use the resource. This rule especially applies to technology. When I conducted a book review last summer, I was appalled at the author's use of a clearly outdated screen capture from an online discussion posting. The image was at least 15 years old, and the technologies have advanced since then, rendering the image ineffectual. Just as we need to update our resources, we need to update our strategies. Do you still refer to learning styles with your students? Or design lessons specifically targeting a quote-unquote learning style? Maybe it's time for you to look at the current research in that area. We now know that no empirical evidence supports learning styles for direct learning outcomes. While the issue is more complex than what I've stated, you should still pause before referring to or using an unsupported concept. Instead, take the time to evaluate your strategies and adjust as necessary. We also need to adjust our design based on student needs. What happens when you receive notice that you'll have a special needs learner? Perhaps it's a child with a learning disability. Perhaps it's an undergraduate with cerebral palsy who cannot write with a pen or pencil. Perhaps one of your students sustains an injury and suddenly needs an accommodation. Whatever the reason, we must be prepared to adjust. Lastly, we evaluate to make changes based on feedback. Perhaps the process you mapped out to use a specific tool or strategy didn't work. Maybe it was the bad Wi-Fi at your location. Maybe the computers at your school are too slow to run the software. You might have made an assumption about your learners having access to a tool that turned out to be false. Again, the feedback will help you determine if and when to make changes. When you think about assessment, know that we could have an entire course on just that topic. For now, just focus on aligning whatever assessments you choose with your objectives for the lesson and or activity. Note that this week's discussion focuses on this area of instructional design. And with that, Let's take a look at this week's expectations. Use the on-screen links to navigate to the section of the overview you wish to access.